One thing that the humans of Earth noticed about the Skrin during the Third Tiberium War was just how similar their military forces were compared to that of humanity's own. The alien invaders had an air and space force in the form of planetary assault carriers, devastator warships, and storm riders. They utilized their own infantry divisions in the form of disintegrators, ravagers, shock troopers, and more. The Skrin's infantry wouldn't fight alone though, as they would be supported by the alien's own version of armored ground vehicles as well. Some of these not necessarily being vehicles, but actual creatures, much like many of the units in the Skrin's arsenal. All ground vehicles were warped in through a portal called the Warp Sphere. It was larger in comparison to the Skrin's infantry portal. When warping in a new vehicular unit, the sphere-shaped portal expands within the confines of the two large frames on each side of it. Once the new vehicle arrived, and no new ones were queued up, the sphere temporarily disappears and reappears back in its original idle state. Small drone creatures displaying a head and four tentacles can be seen flying above the warp sphere. The tentacles of these drones act as repair tools to fix damaged vehicles or large creatures parked near the structure. These reconstruction drones could even be warped in at any location on the battlefield to fix up any damaged Skrin vehicular units in that area. Most Skrin vehicles could surround themselves with buzzer swarms. These swarms provided them with temporary protection from attacks and could quickly kill any nearby infantry units. The first and perhaps the most important vehicle in the Skrin arsenal was the Harvester. This biomechanical creature's only function was to absorb Tiberium into its mouth, and deposit it at an extractor. The creature had cilia protruding from its sides, and four long antennae near its mouth, which it used to fill around the ground in search of Tiberium crystals. While one harvester came free whenever a Skrin foreman constructed an extractor, additional harvesters could be teleported in via the warp sphere. Even though Harvesters were completely defenseless, they could heal themselves when in a Tiberium field. Those Harvesters that were part of the Reaper 17 sect were more evolved. By default, these Harvesters came with a personal bubble shield around them, which provided extra protection. If a Skrin foreman wanted to gain access to new Tiberium fields without moving their drone platform, they would deploy a small vehicle called the Explorer. This spike-shaped drone would be deployed exclusively from the drone platform, and would hover just above the ground. Using the two eyes in its head, it would move across the battlefield in search of a spot to establish an outpost. This was similar to GDI's Surveyor and Nod's Emissary. Once the Explorer found a suitable location, it would plant itself into the ground and permanently root there. Afterwards, a foreman could construct new buildings around the Explorer. The first insect-looking vehicular unit in the Skrin arsenal was the Gunwalker. Despite its bug-like appearance, this six-legged creature appeared to be manufactured. The walker was recognizable due to the large hump on its back, and the vehicle itself was quite large, able to crush a human beneath its legs. The Gunwalker's primary method of attack was a plasma weapon, which shot beams of hot plasma out of two prongs protruding from its head. This weapon made the Gunwalker deadly against infantry, and could tear through the light armor of aircraft, such as GDI's Orcas or Nod's Venoms. However, the Gunwalker's weapon wasn't strong enough to effectively take out more heavily armored vehicles. The Reaper 17 sect had their own version of the Gunwalker, called the Shardwalker. Instead of shooting beams of plasma, the Shardwalker launched Tiberium crystals at high speeds, better able to punch through the armor of some vehicles. This was especially true if the Reaper sect mutated their Shardwalkers with blue shards, which were more effective. While Gun and Shardwalkers had a decent amount of health, they could be equipped with attenuated force fields from a nerve center, thereby increasing their protection, as well as being able to absorb an EMP blast. These force fields could be brought back up after being down for a short time. Another vehicle, called the Seeker Tank, could also make use of these force fields. <coughs> The Seeker tank acted as a light scout vehicle, one that could hover above the ground, allowing it to move swiftly across the battlefield. The Seeker was armed with a plasma disc launcher, whose ionized superheated target-seeking warheads proved effective against armor and aircraft. In addition, the tank was equipped with advanced scanners, which allowed it to detect stealth units, such as Nod's harvesters. 
However, the Seeker was only a light tank, unable to stand up to GDI's more heavily armed and armored Predator, or even Nod's Scorpion tank. This made the attenuated force fields upgrade for the Seeker all the more important in increasing its survivability. The Plasma Disc Launcher could also be replaced with a Shard Launcher from the Technology Assembler. The Shard Launcher was a more effective weapon against enemy units, especially aircraft, though it still did not make up for the tank's lack of armor. To deal with divisions of human infantry, the Skred would use the Corruptor. The Corruptor was another vehicle that closely resembled a creature. This large, legged unit was filled with a vile Tiberium-based concoction, which was contained in a large bulb at the back of its body. From its mouth, the Corruptor could spray this Tiberium toxin across a distance, instantly killing any infantry struck by it, including those garrisoned inside a building or bunker. Some humans would even be transformed into Visceroids by the Corruptor's toxin. These Visceroids would then go on to attack others around them, sometimes including the Corruptors themselves, though not causing them much harm, since the Corruptors were Tiberian-based creatures like the Visceroids. The corrosive effect of this Tiberium concoction was even capable of melting enemy base structures to the ground. Ironically, these same toxins have a restorative effect on the Skrin's own forces. An Eradicator Hexapod supported by a few Corruptors acting as healers was almost unkillable, unless targeted with an overwhelming amount of firepower. To counter the more powerful tanks of the humans, the Skren used the Devourer tank. Perhaps intended as a sadistic mockery, the Skren's Devourer tank seemed to be modeled after the humans' own, yet featured superior maneuverability and firepower thanks to its long-range proton cannon. Similar to the Seeker, the Devourer was a hover tank, but more powerful. The Devourer name refers to how these alien war machines had been observed soaking up Tiberium to supercharge their weaponry. A supercharged Devourer's beam had a unique green glow to it, and combined with its long range, could function as an effective tank destroyer. It was vulnerable to aircraft, and so needed support from other anti-air screen units such as Gunwalkers. Devourers in Reaper 17's arsenal could be upgraded with conversion reserves, allowing them to soak up even more Tiberium, keeping their cannons supercharged longer. The Mechapede was the Skrin's anthropod-looking ground vehicle, closely mimicking a centipede or millipede. Initially, only the head of the unit was built and warped in. This head was armed with a plasma-cutting weapon, similar to those used by disintegrators. From this head, the Mechapede could have up to eight segments attached to it. All segments are loosely connected to each other, with each segment armed with one of four types of weapons. Shard segments let the Mechapede launch Tiberium shards, three per salvo, effective against infantry and light vehicles. Toxin segments function similar to the Corruptors, spraying a corrosive concoction of Tiberium that could quickly bring down enemy structures. Surprisingly, these segments were not as good at clearing out infantry from buildings. Just like the Corruptors, the toxins could be used to heal damaged Skrin units. Disintegrator segments used plasma cutters to cut down nearby infantry and vehicles. Finally, the disc segments launched heated plasma discs at a rapid rate. These discs were the only weapons on the Mechapede that could target and destroy aircraft. Megapedes could personalize their segments. All eight segments could be a single weapon type, or they could be a mix of all four of them. Thanks to its many legs, the Megapede could move swiftly across the battlefield, even faster than the Seeker tank. The Megapede could not move backwards, but its segments could orient themselves in various directions since there wasn't a strong interconnection. Instead, the segments are tethered together, that way, if one is destroyed, it won't break the rest of the chain. Destroyed segments can be reconstructed. However, if the head of the Megapede is destroyed, then its entire body goes with it. This was the only way to fully destroy the Megapede, so human forces needed to focus fire on its head if they wanted to put a quick end to it. Perhaps the most fearsome and destructive of the Skrin armored vehicles was the Annihilator Tripod a towering, three-legged walker, armed with a proton cannon array. Each cannon was mounted on three long tentacles protruding from the top of the tripod's body. 
A single tripod could wreak havoc against enemy forces, attacking multiple targets at once with its proton cannons. Any infantry or vehicle units that were close to the tripod could be crushed beneath its massive legs. Furthermore, the near impregnable armor sometimes cannot be so much as scratched, especially if it was upgraded with powerful force field generators acquired from a technology assembler. Just like the attenuated force fields on the Gunwalker and Seeker, the tripods could absorb an EMP blast, preventing the unit from being shut down. The tripod itself was capable of generating a small electromagnetic pulse against enemy vehicles or structures within its immediate vicinity. Unlike other Skrin units, where it can be difficult to discern whether it is indeed a vehicle or creature, the tripod was most certainly a vehicle. Confirmed by a GDI commando, who took down one of them using C4 charges, and an engineer who managed to access the husk of the tripod and make it operational again. Frontline forces in Europe have managed to capture and reactivate an alien tripod. A commando in direct contact with the enemy disabled the tripod by planting a high explosive charge on the legs of the walker. GDI forces then immediately moved in and established a perimeter around the immobilized alien war machine. Once the area was secure, an engineer was able to gain access to the walker, repair the damaged leg, and reactivate the onboard systems. Early reports indicate that the engineer was able to communicate in a rudimentary fashion with the walker's control entity by utilizing decryption programs similar to those found in the Tacitus, the alien artifact decoded by GDI several decades ago. Of course, the Skrin's assimilators could recrew their own tripods, making it necessary for human forces to just destroy the husk, as that was far better than letting the Skrin continue their destructive rampage with the vehicle. Reaper 17 had their own version of the Annihilator, called the Reaper Tripod. Just like the Devourer tank, the Reaper version was capable of supercharging its proton beams using Tiberium, further increasing its destructive power. Additionally, the Reaper Tripod could be upgraded with conversion reserves, for maintaining longer supercharged beams. The final creature in the Skrin's arsenal of quote, vehicular units, was the Eradicator Hexapod. <laughs> This was the alien's largest ground unit, rivaling both GDI's Marv and the Brotherhood's Redeemer. So large and powerful was this creature that the Skrin had to construct a special structure called the Warp Chasm just to teleport it onto the battlefield. The Warp Chasm functioned as a larger warp sphere, able to teleport in all other vehicular Skrin units. The structure also had reconstruction drones flying above it to repair any damaged units. When warping in an Eradicator, the arches on either side of the chasm closed together, and the wormhole in the middle expanded to the confines of the arches. Once the Eradicator was through, the chasm went back to its idle state. Rumors of a megalithic Skrin unit have been circulating amongst the populace in recent months. Though there has yet to be a confirmed sighting, tales of a massive, many-legged creature have spread rapidly throughout the Yellow Zones. Ghostly images, mostly taken from the edges of the infested red zones, show an enormous lumbering beast, its insectoid features illuminated by a fierce glow emanating from the center of its anthropodal body. Should these rumors prove to be true, maximum discretion is advised. The Eradicator Hexapod was first encountered by the Brotherhood of Nod in the city of Kampala in Uganda, Africa. The creature had six legs attached to its bulbous body, Tentacles grew out from beneath its belly. Two large prongs grew out of the creature's head, with rings of energy emanating between them. From its mouth, the Eradicator launched discs of heated plasma at targets. While not accurate, the exploding discs caused considerable splash damage. Enemy units that found themselves beneath the Eradicator's legs would be crushed by them. This included mech walkers like GDI's Juggernauts and Nod's avatars. The remains of human infantry, vehicles, or structures could be picked up by the Eradicator's underbelly tentacles and be recycled or assimilated by the creature, as a form of generating additional resources for the Skrin. More importantly, the Eradicator could assimilate up to three other Skrin infantry units into itself, gaining access to that particular unit's armament, noticeable on each of the Eradicator's legs. Assimilators would give the Eradicator the ability to heal any damage it sustained, Disintegrators would provide it with short-range plasma cutter weapons. Shock troopers would give it a couple of disc launchers, which gave the Eradicator an anti-air weapon. 
Ravagers provide the creature with shard launchers, and Masterminds, or the Traveler 59 sect's prodigy, provided the Eradicator with a personal teleporter. This teleporter was useful for making an escape from enemy forces, or teleporting on top of a group of enemies and crushing them beneath its legs. The Eradicator could not be easily destroyed. Unlike the tripods, a commando couldn't simply walk up to the creature and plant demo charges on its legs. Overwhelming firepower was needed. Equivalent units such as the Marv or Redeemer were the only ones that could truly face it in a one-on-one -on -one fight. This was how Nod was able to defeat the Eradicator in Kampala, constructing a Redeemer and providing its support from other Brotherhood units. The Nod forces succeeded in destroying the creature and freeing the populace from the Traveler 59 sect. Ultimately, the human forces of Earth were able to defeat the Skrid invasion force, which was really more of a civilian contingent rather than a military one. Should Threshold 19 ever be reactivated though, then humanity may once again have to contend with the Skrin and their formidable arsenal of infantry, armor, and air units. <laughs>